Good morning. Thank you, Ali. So now let's get into today's topic. Our agenda is really to go through the who, what, and why with advanced framing. What is it? Why should one consider adopting it into your project? And when would you do so? What is the best way or how do you phase it into the project? And we'll look at challenges as well as examples of successful advanced framing projects. And coming from a structural engineering background myself and talking with structural engineers, I think it's particularly important to think about how the role you play in this decision making process. And as we'll talk about with advanced framing, it definitely takes all parties on board early on from the architect, the engineer, the framer, to make sure that this is done successfully. And that's also why we do recommend when you're interested in implementing advanced framing, not to do it all at once, but to work your way into this method so that you can minimize the bumps along the way. And as a structural engineer, Many of us as structural engineers aren't as familiar with the energy code requirements and what those challenges are. So this session will touch on some of those elements as well to help those of you who may not have as much knowledge of the energy code and how that impacts our design. Basically, any building from a high rise to a single family home has a certain budget and of course, the owner has to decide how to use that budget most effectively. So we want to make sure that we're able to work with the different aspects of the structure, making it strong, but also energy efficient. So a little humor to begin the session. And what is advanced framing? This is not advanced framing. This obviously was an oversight, overlooked. Um, I don't believe that this is sufficient support for a beam coming through here. And again, another example of obviously not advanced framing. Uh, lots of mistakes, not a complete stud, and then another one scabbed on next to it, um, compromising the location of the anchor bolt. To another extreme, What's wrong here? This isn't advanced framing. It's not the situation of what we were looking at before where we had a structurally incomplete or, or compromised load path. But on the flip side, we have way more than enough shown. If you count the number of plates, how many top plates do we typically have in a wall? And here it looks like three, maybe four top plates stacked up. Our studs are very close to one another. When you get into the corner here, I question what kind of corner detail they use. Likely we have a void, a place where it's not going to be able to be insulated, which is going to create a hot spot or a cold spot in the wall. And finally, another example showing not advanced framing. Again, for the same reason, we really do not need this number of studs underneath these very small windows. Um, overdone, overdesigned, overbuilt. So, what is advanced framing then? And we have a construction guide, the M400, is shown here in this slide that takes the common modern advanced framing techniques and puts them in one document. We also have these CAD details available out of this document. So again, following the session, this would be a key publication to download and to look at. It's available for free on our website. And advanced framing isn't a brand new concept. It's been around for many years. But what we found when we were doing research into this technique was that there wasn't a great resource available for people to use that was modern and complete. There are some books out there that might have a paragraph on advanced framing or maybe a chapter, but we wanted a one place solution that people could use to really get an idea of how to implement advanced framing in today's construction 
techniques.